Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at creating this movie title effect without going anywhere near the 3D title tool. So let's have a quick look at that. As you'll see, it applies not just to titles, but to any graphic object. So it's a very handy technique to learn about. So let's get started on this. A quick look at my project, 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second, 10 seconds long. So the first thing I want to do just to keep everything nice and tidy is to build my group structure. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this group. I'm going to use Command D, but you could use the menu shortcut if you prefer. So Command D, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's enough. No, it doesn't really matter. I can always delete them if it's wrong. So let's type master for the top group. Then I'm going to have a group called texture. I'm going to pop that into the master group. Next group is going to be called material. Okay, and pop that into there. The next group is going to be called displace. The next one is going to be called indent. The next one is going to be called dense. Another one for glass. Another one for matte. And another one for BG or background. So I did make one too many. So let's delete that. So indent, dents and glass are all going to drop into the displace group like that. Then what I want to do is I want to add a color solid. So I'm going to come over to the library, grab the color solid, bring that into the background group there, come over to the inspector and make this black. And then holding down the Alt or Option key, I'm going to copy that into the matte group, the glass group, dense group, indents group, material group, and why not copy it into the texture just for good measure. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to bring in my artwork. Now we could type a piece of text if we want, but I want to show you that this, is, this works with artwork as well. So I'm gonna click on import. I'm gonna bring in my logo style. Let's just sort of that. It looks like this. So this is literally a piece of artwork I've made in Photoshop uh, and, and I've, you know, done some fancy stuff with the, the letters just to, to make it a bit more fun. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a clone of this. So right click make clone layer and we're going to copy that into the glass group above the color solid. Then we're going to hold down the alt or option key to make a copy and drag that into the indent group like that. Right, now we need to add a material. So I'm going to come to that material group, click on import, and I'm going to add this reflection. It's on solo, solo what I've soloed. Let's have a look at that reflection image. It's just a picture of some trees and some sky. Just anything that's kind of got a nice lot of contrast is going to work well for this. So unsolo that. So what I'm going to do with this material group here is I'm going to turn it to fixed resolution. I'm also going to do that same thing with the indent group, the dense group, and the glass group. Also do the same thing with the mat, actually, just, just to keep things tidy. OK, so I'm going to come back to my material group here. Let's just turn off this texture group here because it's obscuring everything for the time being. OK, so my material group, I'm going to add some filters to. So the first thing I'm going to add is glass distortion. And here in the input, I'm going to use my glass group and drag it into there. I'm going to turn the amount up to 500 and the softness all the way up as well. Now, it's only distorting around the very edges. And in order to fix that, we're going to come to this glass group 
we're going to select that clone layer and we're going to add a Gaussian blur. And let's set the amount all the way up to 64. And now, hopefully you can see that that's smeared it out a lot more. And that's what we want. So just to make it a little bit clearer what we're doing, I'm going to add an image mask to this material group. And I'm going to come down and grab the matte group and drag it into the mask source and switch the source channel to luminance, which gives us this cutout. So now we can see how that glass distortion is bending the image round the contours of the graphic object. So next, what we're going to do with this material group is we're going to add stylize indent. And again, we're going to look at this height map source well, and we're going to use the indent group there, bring that in. Now we need to do the same sort of thing with the indent group that we did with our glass group. So I'm going to take that clone layer there, come to blur, Gaussian blur, and this time I'm going to set the value to 32. I'm going to turn off this displace group because we don't actually need to see it. So let's turn that off because we're seeing it around the back of everything else. So then I'm going to take the indent group and I'm going to add a color, color curves. Now, color curves is crucial for this. It was only introduced fairly recently in Motion and you can't do it with any other tool. We certainly can't create this profile that I want to create. So I'm going to drag the black down to there and bring the white in like that. So I've got something like that. And now I'm going to come over to my indent. I'm going to turn the ambient down to nothing so we can see the effect of this a bit more. I'm going to turn the softness all the way up. I'm going to set the brightness all the way up. The highlight brightness I'm going to set to 100. Now the highlight sharpness is what determines how bright it is and how bright those highlights are. So I'm going to bring that down to make it look quite shiny, so somewhere around. 10 is probably going to do. So now you can see we've got this nice chiseled, chiseled text. And if I rotate that light, you can see how that gives this really nice 3D effect. But let's just bump up that depth all the way up to 20. So that's nice and strong. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add another indent filter to this material group. So I'm going to come down to stylize indent down there. And for this one, I'm going to use my dense group. I haven't currently got anything in my dense group. So let's go down there, come to import, and I'm going to import my dense image. And I'll just solo that for you so you can quickly see is this grungy texture. I'll put these textures in the comments so you can grab them and use them for your own version. Okay, now we're going to come back to that indents filter. Let's call that indents dense. And let's call the other one indent bevel. So dense, we're going to grab the dense group and we're going to drag it into the map channel. And you can see that oh, we've got this nice textural bump. But what I'm going to do is going to add another texture to this dense group. So below that dense, so let's click on the color solid, I'm going to come over to the library. And under generators, I'm going to look down here for Truchet tiles, and I'm going to bring that in there. And let's just come to the dense, and let's just set that opacity down to 50%. So now we can see our other texture through. So you can see that that's this sort of diagonal pattern. So I'm just going to come over to that generator. I'm going to set the tile size down to 20. And what this will give us is just a little bit of that sort of, you know, antique kind of chiseling effect. So I'll turn back on the dents over the top. So let's come over to the indent filter for dents. And let's change up some of those settings. I'm going to set the softness down to 0.1. Ambient, I'm going to reduce a bit. 
down to about somewhere like that. I like brightness down to zero and sharpness down like that. Let's reduce the depth down to about four. Okay, so then I'm going to come down. I just want to make a little bit of an adjustment to that dense image itself. Filters, color correction. What are we going to use? We're going to use contrast here. I just want to increase the contrast and bring down the pivot. This is quite a subtle effect. I probably need to zoom in for you to be able to see it. So dense on and off. You can see how that's sort of breaking up that pattern, giving us a bit of roughness. And that's quite nice. OK, so the next thing I want to do is I want to animate this reflection texture. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to come to Filters, Distortion, Twirl. And we could animate it in various different ways, but I think this is quite a useful one. So I'm going to set the Twirl amount down to zero. And I just want to add a rate behavior to it. So let's set a rate of 10. And now you can see, I hope, that that's got this, this sort of swirling reflections. And I'm going to duplicate that. Right click Duplicate. Let's set the blend mode of this to Add. And let's also set the blend mode of that one to Add. And let's have a different rate going the opposite direction. So negative 15. And I think you can see how that's got this nice reflection effect. Uh, depending on how matte we want our surface to be, we could add a blur to this reflection effect. But I think I'm going to leave it like that for the time being. OK, it's all looking a little bit dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color correction to this master group. So color, color curves. Let's just bump up the whites a bit. Maybe even the, the shadows just a little bit so we can see a little bit more what's going on. Now, because I set these two reflection layers to add, we can come to the generator and we can change the base color of the effect. Let's go for something like that. A little bit of blueiness in it, maybe. I don't know. OK, next thing I want to do is I want to add in my texture. So I'm going to come to this texture group and I'm going to import the thing that I've called dark flatten there. That's it's a texture that looks like this. And let's turn that group on. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this color solid. I don't need that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring this down, this entire texture group down into that material group just above that color solid down there. And now I think you can see how that is affecting everything down there. Let's just add a color curves to this. And you see I can darken down and it's creating this sort of nice staining effect down there at the bottom. And if we come over to that texture group and set its blend mode to darken, it'll allow that base color to show through a little bit more. OK, let's come over to our master color curves and let's maybe just make this a little bit more kind of gold. Let's just increase the red and green. Let's push the low blue and just reduce the, the highs there. So we've got this nice color contrast in there. I'm going to do to make this really look nice is to come over and to add an effect that is not yet available, but is going to be soon, and that's Hawaii Super Glow. So add that, and let's increase the threshold. And you can see we've got this really, really classy looking glow that, that does absolutely fantastic job very, very easily. Lots of incredibly powerful controls here, which I won't go into at this point. Next up, let's just animate that the lighting effect. So I'm going to come to the indent bevel and set that light rotation to zero. And I'm going to add parameter behavior ramp. And I'm going to go from 
a start value of zero to an end value of 160. Now we want to do the same thing with the dents here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to zero out the light rotation, add parameter behavior, link, drag in that material group, filters, indent bevel, light rotation. So now we've got those two linked together. And that, as that light rotates, it really helps to sell the effect. Now, as I say, I think we've probably overdone these reflections here. They, they are too sh shiny, I think, for this look that we've gone for. So I'm going to just reduce those down a bit with the, just reduce the detail a little bit with a blur filter like that and copy it onto the other one as well. Just makes it look slightly less shiny. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add, tell you what, I'm going to add something else. I'm going to add filters, sharpen, and sharp mask. Always really helps. Motion has this tendency to make everything a little bit too blurry. And I think that really just helps to kick it out. Gives it a really nice, crisp, punchy effect. And let's now add a light. So add object light. Let's keep it as 2D. And, and then I'm just going to switch this master group to 3D like that. Let's move our light up to the top of the scene like that. Let's set the intensity to 400 and the fall off down to one. And that's just giving us a little bit more drama like that. Actually, maybe increase the intensity even more. I don't know. Yes, there we go. Let's, that's something like that. And let's add a camera. We want to come to properties, Z position, add parameter behavior, ramp. Let's have a start value of negative 1000 and an end value of 500. Now, something's gone wrong here. And that is because, if I close up all these groups, we need to put the mat group inside the master group. So I'm just going to drag that in like that. That sorts that out, so the mat is traveling along with that. So now our animation looks like this, and it's really not looking too bad. Obviously, there's a lot more work we could do on it, um, but that, that gives you the basic idea. Just to finish this off, I'm going to add in a new layer. So make a new group. I'm going to import this animation that I've created. Some dust floating around with a light at the top like that. And let's just come to properties and set this group to add. And you'll see how that really helps to give a sense of, of, of space. So I'll put a link to that little animation again in the comments so you can have a play with that. So let's look at some ways of making this more interesting. First of all, I'm going to take my light. Let's reduce the intensity and let's set the fall off to zero and then what i'm going to do is animate its position so let's set um, a y position of 960 z position of 50 and then let's add a parameter behavior ramp to the x position start value negative 720 end value positive 720 and let's add another light. And let's make this a directional light. Let's open up its rotation 45 degrees on X and 45 degrees on Y. And let's reduce its intensity to 40. Just going to come in here to the color curves and just uh, we're going to come back to this later, but I just want to brighten it up for the time being like this, possibly make it a little bit more kind of golden in color. What I want to do is I want to look at brightening it up quite a bit more. So let's come in here and adjust the indent values. I'm going to reduce that down a little bit, increase the brightness of these dents here, 
Ambient I'll set down to zero. Highlight brightness to 33. Highlight sharpness to 28. And this is going to this is going to work once we've done all our extra work to this. Okay, so come down to the indent bevel. Again, let's make a little bit of an adjustment here. I want to increase the ambient to 0.1, reduce the highlight brightness down to 53, highlight sharpness to 4. Okay, so let's let's look at these reflections here. I'm going to set the second reflection, there's a bottom reflection to linear dodge. And let's turn off these blurs so it's sharper. Then I want to come to my texture group here. I want to add an image mask to this object here. And I'm going to use the matte as the mask source and set it to luminance. I'm going to come and add a stylize min max to this image mask. And let's set a value of 10. Let's set this to normal. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to come down and look at the displace group here. First of all, I want to take the truche tiles and add it from the dense group into the indent group. So at the top of that. So I'm going to hold down the auto option key and drag it into there. Then what I'm going to do is take this color and if we switch to grayscale, I'm going to set that to 99%. And then come over here, I'm going to set that to darken 1%. Then I'm going to come down to the dense group. I'm going to set this blend mode here of the dense layer to multiply. Set its opacity up to 100. And then I'm going to take that, where did we create it? We created this image mask here for the that texture group. I'm going to copy that onto the dense, and I'm also going to copy that onto the true shade tiles. And if we look closely, I'm going to add onto this one here, I'm going to add a blur, Gaussian blur, set its value to 20. You can see what's what's doing. It's doing quite nicely. It's creating this extra edge here. And then let's look at this Truche tiles. Let's set that down to about seven and see how that's working there. And I'm also going to take this contrast filter that we added here and just let's reduce that value just to reduce those dents a bit. In actual fact, we can probably even turn it off. Let's, let's turn it off. That's better. It's created a smoother result. So now we've got this sort of epic gold look with that extra detailing. Uh, it's really pretty nice. Uh, we could just come up to the master color curves, maybe play with that. What's well, often quite a nice idea to do with this is to create quite an unusual profile here sort of not too linear. And you can see that just adds more kind of goldy look to it. If we if we mess this up a little bit, very much depends on, on how that profile works. You, look, if I turn this color correction off, you can see it's, it's doing a lot of work there. So that's a pretty nice look that we've got, it's very different from where we started. Uh, you might not want sort of super gold, but just wanted to show you how you might achieve that. And obviously there's literally no end to the different kinds of looks you can achieve with this, depending on how you tweak all these many different parameters. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again another time.